Okay, it dried at one o'clock, so it started. Um, and while we're going through this, normally they ask you to wait for the end to get questions. I don't mind if you interrupt me doing the part of it, but um, yeah, we'll get going from here. What we're going to talk about is rainwater harvesting to meet your future needs. And what we're looking at is sustainability. I know a lot of people think that with rainwater, you know, when it doesn't rain, you're going to run out of water. Well, we've been basically going to drop the record now for a couple of years. And we've never gotten down at our house lower than 33,000 gallons of water, which is a year supply. We had this month so far, we've had 3.5, 6 inches of rain. And, and in Kendall County, I live in Kendall County between Bernie and Comfort. Some of them had six or seven inches of rain, but we didn't. But it was enough to go from 33,000 gallons up to 40,500. So I'm good enough. I just have to. I can go two years without rain. But we need to talk about sustainability. Okay. All right. Of course, rainwater harvesting is nothing new. It's not rocket science. And the, our pioneers that moved up into this country, they didn't have the ability to drill wells. Like we live on top of a hill, 900 foot of rock. We didn't drill a well, but it would have cost $26,000. We put our rainwater system in for $14,500. Me doing the work, you, know, you can't hire that for that, but it's going to run somewhere around a dollar and a quarter. It depends on what kind of tanks you want to use, cisterns and all. But when they finally got the ability to drill wells, because first they lived either by a creek or a pond or a spring or something like that. But when they finally got the ability to drill wells, they moved away, they basically had water on the land, and the rainwater system was pretty much laid out. I mean, you can still see them in the hill country, the systems are still, some of the rock systems are still sitting there. But now, with the population growth that's occurring, we don't have the groundwater to support the population. Wells are going dry now, at least in our county. Uh, and of course, they're beginning to pipe water in from Canyon Lake. Well, Canyon Lake is down quite a bit right now. And feasibly, it could run out of water. But a well designed rainwater system will sustain you through the drought of the record. Okay, um, and, and all of this, I think, is going to be on the website I think they're videoing it also. But like I'm saying, the property design rainwater harvest system can supply all your domestic and household needs through the repeat of the draft of record. Okay, fortunately Texas, our legislature has taken some pretty good steps to encourage rainwater harvesting. Some of the things they've done is um, giving the local taxing authorities the ability to waive taxes on the rainwater portion of your property, not the whole. You know, they're going to tax you one way or another. But for the, the rainwater portion of it, in other words, your cisterns and your uh, filters and your UV light and all that, they, they, don't, they don't add that to your market value of your house, so you don't pay taxes on that. The other thing they did, and of course they did this after I built my system, they no longer make you pay sales tax. So when you're buying your tanks or your filters, your ultraviolet, whatever, you don't have to pay the sales tax on that. Okay. One of the things in, in our county, we've got a lot of upscale subdivisions. Well, some of them said, I don't want to see rainwater harvesting in my subdivision. Okay, we went to the legislature, and now the homeowner association cannot prevent you from having rainwater harvesting. Now, that doesn't mean they can't say you've got to screen it or put some bushes around it or something where it's not so apparent. But they can not, no longer stop you from doing that. Uh, and then there's a, in fact, I was on the governor's task force on this report entitled Rainwater Harvesting Potential and Guidelines for Texas. From that, legislation is being acted on, like right now, any new state buildings with 10,000 square foot of surface roof or more have got to have rainwater harvesting. Basically, that's for the uh, flushing the toilets and laundry and your landscaping. 
in a, in a public building, most of the water goes to flushing parts of the bathroom. So that would really help. Um, and then they're also encouraging each institution, each of the colleges, to develop a curriculum to include rainwater harvesting and condensate recovery. And you, you would be amazed at how much water you can collect from a, like a Walmart or a Home Depot or any kind of shopping mall from the air conditioning system. The schools, like the new Bernie Champion High School, is all rainwater collection there, including their condensate. And they can generate 5,000 gallons a day just for compensating. That would run the school. Now, I won't do the yard water and the football field. It'll take care of the whole school. The Bernie schools put it in as part of their water harvesting for the football field. Okay. Could you speak up, please? We can't hear that. Ooh, I thought I was too noisy now. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Now, the other thing, the Texas uh, Water Development Board, y'all can get this online and download it, or you can buy it from them. But this is a real good manual on how to do it. It's worth the reading. And like I say, you can download it if you want. Uh, of course, to me, by the time I pay for the paper and the ink and all, it's cheaper to buy it. Okay. This is just a schematic of a rainwater harvesting system. You've got, of course, the rainfall, and you've got your roof, which is your collection surface. You've got your gutter systems, your first flush devices, your storage, your pressure pumps, your filters, and your ultraviolet. And you come out with very, very clean water. One of the things, and I'll probably harp on this more than once, to get a high quality water, what you need to do is screen out all of the organics before they get to your cisterns. You don't want leaves and crickets and other things in your tanks. I've seen people that run their water directly off their roof into there without ever screening it. And you'll wind up with a foot or two of leaves and sticks and crickets. And, and I've got screens I've caught mice and squirrels in it, baby squirrels. But you don't want that in your cisterns. That's the water you're going to drink. And I can tell you some tales about people in the country that got these big cypress tanks that are not covered. Okay. You don't want to know what's in there. Okay, in Texas, the rainwater that you harvest is yours. In Colorado, up till this summer, it wasn't yours. Up there, it didn't matter whether it's dew or snow or hail or rain or whatever. It was the state's. They've changed it, although they still have some goofy rules. If you're going to collect rainwater, you still have to get a permit. And the permit is, could you have drilled a well? Well, what does that have to do with collecting rainwater? I don't know. But that's Colorado. Okay, treated, harvested rainwater is suitable for both potable and non-potable uses. Untreated is good, like I mentioned, for toilets, laundry, landscaping, garden, and wildlife. Okay. Now, when you're contemplating the installation of a rainwater system, there are several things you need to look at and think about. One, what are you going to use the water for? If it's just going to be for gardening and landscaping, you still need to screen and keep the junk out of your cisterns, but you don't need to go through the secondary filters and the UV lights like you do when you first potable water. Okay, then, like in our case, it's both. Then, is there an adequate location for, to put the tanks, and they can get big. Depends how much water you're going to store. Now, now I worked with San Juan Water System. They were talking about using rainwater harvesting to, to um, not use so much Edwards water in the summer to water the yard. Now, you have to remember, for every 1,000 square foot of yard that you have, when you put one inch of water on it, that's 600 gallons. So if you've got a 5,000 square foot yard, and you water it once a week, that are, each, or you just multiply by five, it's 3,000 gallons. Now, so what, what you're saying is there is you don't want a great big yard if you have rainwater harvesting. Now, you can design for it. If you've got the roof area and the system capacity, you can do it. But, and, and what they were after is putting a, a tank in the yard and then watering the grass. Well, that's fine. So we sat down with them, or I did, and 
figured out that you needed about 25,000 to 30,000 gallons of water to carry you through the summer, three, four months. Well, by that time, if you had that much water stored, you didn't have a backyard anymore. <laughs> it was all the tanks. <laughs> so they quickly figured that wasn't necessarily a good idea. The good idea, though, is to use organic uh, manure compost a couple of times a year, and that will cut down your water use by sometime almost a half, which is what we try to do. Okay. Do you have space enough for the system? No, back up. Do you have space enough for the cisterns? Do you have a big enough roof area? You need to know what the rainfall patterns in your part of the country are. And I'll show you for us, but it depends where you're at. Because the rainfall varies. Like East Texas gets about 60 inches a year. El Paso gets about 80. So there's a huge difference in the design of a system if it's in El Paso or if it's